Should John 3, 8 say the wind blows where it wills or the spirit blows where it wills? We'll talk about it. <laughs> Elizabeth asks, Pastor Wolfmuller, yesterday a verse in one of the readings, John 3, 8, caught my attention. More specifically, it was the word wind and spirit that caught my attention. I've learned by a tiny bit of Greek, though I thought that those two words were the same in Greek, so I went to my Greek New Testament, checked it out. Sure enough, they are. Is there a reason for them being translated into English the way they are? Since they're the same word in Greek, wouldn't that imply that they are closely related, something that seems like it completely missed in the English text? Could you decipher some of the text? Thanks, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, great question. Now, the whole section here in John chapter 3 is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, and he says, that which is, starting in chapter 3, verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So says Jesus. That's from the, the old King James. And Elizabeth is right that the Greek word for wind and spirit is the same. Now, it, it's the Hebrew word panoima, which is the same phenomenon also in Hebrew. Ruach, the Hebrew word ruach, can mean both wind or breath or spirit. And the name panoima, the word panoima in Greek, can mean breath or wind or spirit. So, some people have said that because Jesus says, because you hear the sound of it, that he's making a comparison in this verse. The wind blows where it wills. You hear the sound of it. You don't know where it came from. You don't know where it's going. So it is who everyone who is born of the Spirit. And so we've taken the two different meanings of the same Greek word, and we've said that Jesus is doing a play on words. Just like the wind, so it is that those who are born of the Spirit. And Luther, by the way, did the same when he translated uh, the Gospel of John. He used the German word for wind, which is a completely different word than the word for spirit in that place. But, he says, we're not going to hold it against you if you don't do that. In fact, I found some Luther on this particular text. He says, uh, he says, the reason why we have translated the word spirit with wind is here found in the Lord's word. You hear the sound of it and his word, so it is with everyone born of the spirit. He is using the simile of the wind in order thereby to instruct Nicodemus regarding the second birth or the new birth. He says that the wind and the spirit have this in common. The one is like the other in this respect. Therefore, it makes good sense to relate the first part of the text to the wind. We've stuck to it, although it is not wrong or heretical to adopt the other interpretation, as some do, taking the word spirit to mean Holy Spirit. According to this interpretation, these words do not draw a comparison between the wind and the spiritual birth, but between the Holy Spirit and those who are born from him, who are like him. No one sees the Holy Spirit. No one touches him. I know not where he comes and where he goes. Thus, I cannot see the Christian either. Can I, I can't, nor can I say, at this time in this place, I shall become a Christian. In brief, it is invisible. Neither the time nor the place can be fixed. It's intangible. It can't be felt. It can't be clothed. It does not consist in anything that can be seen and felt. That's nothing. But the point is, and this is the point of the whole conversation, that while we can't touch the Holy Spirit, we can hear the sound. So just like Jesus says, you, you don't know, you can't see the wind or, or you can't see the Spirit, but you hear the Spirit. So we remember that we don't, we don't feel the Spirit in our hearts, our kind of spiritual antenna, but we hear the Holy Spirit. And how do we hear the Holy Spirit? We hear the Holy Spirit when we hear God's word being preached and taught in its truth and purity. So thank you, Elizabeth, for the question. Hopefully this helps. I remember the first time I visited a Lutheran church and I said, I just didn't feel the Holy Spirit there. Who knew that you're not supposed to feel the Holy Spirit? You're supposed to hear the Holy Spirit. Who knew? Well, Jesus knew. Nicodemus knew. John knew. We should know. <laughs>